This video lecture addresses community structure in regards to the field of ecology. Community ecologists focus on the feeding relationships among the component species within the community. A food chain is a descriptive diagram that represents the flow of energy from prey, the consumed, to predator, the consumer. Feeding relationships in nature are more complex than food chains and include an array of linkages among primary producers and consumers. Food webs are highly interwoven, with linkages representing a wide variety of species interactions. Some important basic terminology is associated with food web structure. Links are the arrows from one species to another and indicate the consumed and the consumer. Basal species feed on no other species but are fed upon by others. Intermediate species feed on other species and they themselves are prey of other species. Top predators prey on intermediate and basal species. Ecologists often simplify the representation of food webs by grouping species into broader categories that represent general feeding groups or trophic levels based on the source from which they derive energy. In this image, we see the autotrophs or primary producers at the bottom of the diagram followed by heterotrophs. The rabbit is labeled the primary consumer followed by the snake as a secondary consumer and the eagle as the tertiary consumer. Sometimes we instead refer to the rabbit as an herbivore and the snake and eagle as carnivores. A species that consumes both plant matter and animals would be termed an omnivore. Guilds are groups of species that exploit a common resource in a similar fashion and there is potential for strong interactions between the members. Examples would be nectar feeding or seed eating birds. The functional type defines a group of species based on their common response in the environment. Examples of functional types include plants grouped into C3, C4, and CAM photosynthetic pathways, shade tolerant versus shade intolerant plants, or reproductive practices of iteroparity versus semoparity. Another important concept in community ecology is that of trophic cascades. The, the synopsis for the video, Wolves Help Aspen Trees Grow, by the American Museum of Natural History, reads, quote, Wolves, elk, and groves of tall mature aspen trees dot the wildlife-rich Lamar Valley in the northern region of Yellowstone National Park. Young aspen are beginning to flourish in some of these groves. What is missing from this picture are the middle years for Yellowstone's trees. Aspens that sprouted in the last several decades, not the last several years. A new study by Oregon State University biologists William Ripple and Robert Best explain these missing years by investigating the interconnectivity of species in Yellowstone. Wolves were eradicated from Yellowstone in the 1920s and reintroduced in 1995. The wolves not only predate on the elk, but introduce a fear factor. They scare them away from browsing on new aspen shoots. This biobulletin highlights the dynamics of this ecosystem, which, even though protected, is still susceptible to declines when a key species is removed." End quote. The trophic cascades concept involves the oscillating changes among the trophic levels. For example, the reintroduction of wolves increased the top predators, which decreased the population of prey, the elk and deer, which are the grazers or browsers. This meant an increase in the primary producers, since there was re reduced grazing pressure. Communities have a characteristic physical structure, and that physical structure reflects abiotic and biotic factors. The form and structure of terrestrial communities are defined primarily by vegetation. Ecologists often classify and name terrestrial communities based on the dominant growth form, for example, herbaceous or woody, and their physical structure. Every community has an associated vertical structure. Terrestrial vertical structure is determined by the growth form of plants, which controls the vertical gradient of light. For example, a well-developed forest has multiple layers of vegetation. The upper layer or canopy is the primary site of energy fixation through photosynthesis. 
The understory is situated under the canopy and will only form if enough sunlight can reach these lower layers. The nature of the herb layer depends on various abiotic conditions, for example, soil moisture and the density of the canopy and understory. The forest floor is where decomposition takes place and nutrients and minerals are recycled. The physical structure of aquatic communities is defined by features of the abiotic environment, for example, salinity or water depth, though dominant organisms are also used to classify and name aquatic communities. Aquatic vertical structure is determined largely by light penetration through the water column. The photic zone is where the availability of light supports photosynthesis, in contrast to the aphotic zone, which is an area without light. The benthic zone is where decomposition is most active, and it may be photic or aphotic depending on depth of the water column. Aquatic ecosystems have distinctive profiles of temperature and oxygen. Smith and Smith define the epilimnion as the, quote, warm, oxygen-rich upper layer of water in a lake or other water body of water, usually seasonal, end quote. The metalimnion, quote, which is characterized by the thermocline, end quote, and the hypolimnion as the, quote, cold, oxygen-poor zone of a lake below the thermocline, end quote. Various types of consumers and decomposers occupy all levels of the community. Decomposers are typically found in greater abundance in the forest floor and sediment benthic layers. Interchange takes place among the vertical strata, though many highly mobile animals restrict themselves to only a few layers. The composition of species in each layer shifts during the day, with season, in response to weather or climate, in response to abiotic conditions, for example, oxygen or light. Zonation is spatial change in community structure. As one moves across the landscape, the physical and biological structure of the community changes. For example, there are changes in biological structure that occur in a hilly forest from hilltop to bottomland. These changes are referred to as zonation. Patterns of spatial variation in community structure or zonation are common to all environments, both aquatic and terrestrial. For example, zonation of a salt marsh is in response to microtopography, water depth, sediment oxygenation, and salinity. In coastal systems, intertidal zonation is determined by tidal action. Sandy beaches are supertidal and are situated above the high tide line. Intertidal areas lie in between the high and low tide. The subtidal zones are below the low tide line and are continuously inundated. Defining boundaries between communities is often difficult. The community is a spatial concept and communities are distinguished based on observable differences in their physical and biological structure. One major question community colleges face is how different must two adjacent areas be before we call them separate communities? The answer is based on the degree of similarity or difference and can be rather subjective. So the distinction between communities is arbitrary based on the criteria for classification. An important uh, vocabulary term here is association which is a type of community with relatively consistent species competition, composition, a uniform general appearance or physiognomy, and a distribution that is characteristic of a particular habitat. Two contrasting views of the community have developed in the last 100 plus years, and the differences between the views is the importance of interactions, current and evolutionary, in the structuring of communities. These views are described as the organismic concept of communities and the individualistic or continuum concept. Presented by botanist Frederick Clements, the organismic concept of communities suggests communities are integrated units. Transitions between communities are narrow with few species in common. 
The graphic shown here suggests that there are distinct associations of species, though, for example, in the bottom graphic, species A does overlap the associations. The development of a community through time was viewed as the development of the organism, and this view suggests a common evolutionary history and similar fundamental responses and tolerances for the component species. Clement's model of communities was based in autogenic succession, wherein vegetation development is a sequence of stages resembling development of an individual organism. Three fundamental concepts are that vegetation occurs in communities, changes over time is brought about by biota, and changes are linear and directional towards a mature, stable climax ecosystem. In contrast, botanist H. A. Gleason presented the individualistic or continuum concept, which states that the relationship among coexisting species, that is, species within a community, is due to similarities in their requirements and tolerances, not to strong interactions or a common evolutionary history. Instead, species distributions occur along environmental gradients but do not cluster. Instead, the resulting curves, as shown here, represent the independent responses of species, and the traditions are, transitions are gradual and difficult to identify. In this sense, the individualistic hypothesis, or the continuum concept, suggests that the distribution of a species is governed by its response to the environment. McPherson and DiStefano present a nice recap of the major ideas in community ecology. Clement's organismic concept of communities theorized plant communities are superorganisms and comprised of interdependent species. In contrast, Gleason's individualistic or continuum concept theorized that species are distributed in an individualistic nature along environmental gradients. More modern ideas of communities include the following, that communities are delimitable in time and space, that communities are inseparable from climate, and that communities are characterized by structural homogeneity. While neither Clement's nor Gleason's ideas have been fully supported in the ecological field of study, both provide a theoretical framework for community ecology. The following resources were consulted in developing this video lecture on community structure.